What's up guys, Rick here with my top five sleepers for this week's Rocket Mortgage Classic. These are my sleepers. They don't have to be your sleepers, but these are guys that I think are worth a second look, maybe a bit of a deeper dive because this field strength, it falls off a cliff. Let's be real and trying to find value to pair with some of the guys at the top can be a bit difficult. So hopefully these are some names that can point you in the right direction. While I'm here, don't forget there are three different live chats this week. Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern time is the Rocket Mortgage live chat. Whatever you want to talk about, ownership, weather, whatever, that time is yours. 8.15 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. That's the Jock Market Power Hour. That is all things stock market DFS. And then the brand new Cut Sweat Show is Friday, currently 4 p.m. Eastern time. And definitely subject to change. I will uh, try to find the moment to go live where the cut sweat is the sweatiest. So join me for that. Make sure to go over to that room right now. Hit the notification bell. That way you are notified and alerted when that does actually go live. All right. Let's get into sleepers. Let's go. Let's start with Harold Varner the third. He's seventy-eight hundred dollars on DraftKings. He is eighty to one to win this golf tournament, and we don't have to go far back to find a good week for Harold Varner the third. Even though he finished forty-seventh last week at the Travelers Championship, he gained six point eight seven strokes on approach. It was the best mark in the field, and strokes gained approach is not only. Every single week, an important stat, but it is one of the stickier stats, meaning that um, if you pl if you have a, a good number in that category one week, you're likely to have it the following week. The follow it's, it's slower to turn, unlike strokes gained putting, for example. And it would be easy to say, hey, HV3 gained 6.8 strokes on approach. It's probably not going to happen again. That's not entirely true either. If you look since the start of 2015, he's had three other events that were better than what he did last week. He's had eight different events in which he's gained at least six strokes on approach. He's had about 12 events in which he's gained at least five strokes on approach. It is not that uncommon for Howard Varner III to do that. So I'm thinking what he might have this week is a really good floor, a really good base. And if he can figure out the rest of the game, specifically the putter, the one thing that tends to cause him issues, if he can putt to a zero like he did at the Palmetto Championship, like he did at the Memorial, and do what he did with his irons last week, he might certainly be in the mix in this weaker field event that we have in Detroit this week. Cam Davis is up next. He is $7,200. He's 125 to one. And I spoke a lot about him in the DFS preview. So I don't think I have to spend too much time here, but if there was a golf course that I could create for Cam Davis, it would probably look a lot like Detroit golf club, the North course. That's where we're playing this week. And it looks more like a driving range than it does a PGA tour course, which is really good for Cam Davis who ranks 16th in driving distance yet 187th in accuracy. Accuracy. And when you aren't penalized around Detroit Golf Club for being inaccurate off the tee, being able to hit it far is a huge advantage. And then you look at kind of the rest of his game, and he's actually probably better in some of these areas than you would expect. He's 63rd in strokes gained approach uh, on tour. He's about 22nd in this field. He makes a lot of eagles. He makes enough birdies. I mean, I just, I just think that there is probably not a better spot to roll him out. Now, he might, uh, he might whiff and, and burn us all, but this is literally, if I could go out and design a course for Cam Davis, it would look just like this. Hank Lebiota is $7,200 and 125 to one to win this event. And he's starting to feel a bit like the flavor of the month, but I don't think that that's unwarranted. You know, when we went through that stretch of, of Vincent Whaley, now we're going through the stretch stretch of Hank Lebiota. And for good reason, he has, he has made the cut in five consecutive events. Three of those results have been top 17 finishes and his most recent start, the Travelers is a fifth place finish. Now I'm not nearly as bullish on Lebiota longer term or kind of in this weird little stretch of golf that he's in, that he's playing well, but this week, I feel a little bit differently. You know, he relies on the putter too much for my liking. You know, in his last five starts, he's gained two, he's gained three, he's gained five twice. Um, that, to me, is a little bit concerning, but 
if there was any place that I would be less concerned about it, it would be this one because you're going to need to be able to drain a ton of putts, make a ton of birdies to have a chance to win or have a chance to finish on the first page of the leaderboard. So I, I think this might be the last week of that Hank Lebiota stretch. I think you have one last chance to get him before he inevitably is going to miss a cut. He is going to burn us all. His ownership seems to be flying up the charts. Uh, I, I think this is probably our last gasp for Hank Lebiota. Patrick Rogers is 6,900 and 125 to one to win this golf tournament. I might be a sucker here. I might be a sucker for Patrick Rogers, whose ownership has not cracked 5% in any event since the Corrales Punta Cana Resort and Club Championship. That was in March. He also cracked it at the Puerto Rico Open. And I think for good reason in those events, because what plays well at resort courses kind of also plays well here at the Detroit Golf Club. That is the ability to drive the ball and it is the ability to put the ball those two things because you have to make a lot of birdies driving distance Patrick Rogers is 28th on Tories 58th in strokes gained off the tee so what does that tell you very inaccurate with the driver 194th but again not as big of a deal this week strokes gained putting while he's actually having uh, one of the worst putting seasons uh, in the last four years he's still a small gainer in that category and he can be volatile in a good way way. You look at his ability to make birdies. Not great. 121st on tour, but much better than that in this field. I just think there is a rare opportunity to get a golfer who can do driving and putting. That's what Bryson can do. Driving and putting. Now, please, I am not comparing Patrick Rogers to Bryson DeChambeau in any stretch of the imagination. It's just a very rare combination of skill sets on the PGA Tour. And when you get them and you go to a course that should reward those things, in theory, this might be a good spot for him. I've got very little hope uh, realistically, but this is probably one of the better places he could play. Finally, Adam Schenk is $6,500 and he is 275 to one to win this golf tournament. And Adam Schenk was a guy that we were playing a lot in the fall. He was making a ton of cuts in a row, kind of fell off a little bit, but he's starting to get back to that type of player. He's made three of his last four cuts. He's made five of his last seven cuts. And you're looking for someone down in that bottom range who has the ability to be paired with someone like a Bryson DeChambeau. And the $6,500 price tag on Schenk is is really inspiring. He's 70th on tour in strokes gained off the tee. He's 86th in distance. He's actually quite accurate for how far he hits it when you compare him to the rest of this field. So he's gaining strokes off the tee. I just think that um, there's a little bit, there, there is not a, a real good option in the $6,000 range this week. We've we've seen that in weeks past. It's been Lebiota. It's been um, Vince Whaley at times. There's not that golfer this week. And I think Shank, at least offers some of the safer outcomes for someone who only costs $6,500 that you can then use to kind of pry some of those bigger name players into the field. So I think he's more valuable in this field because of how weak it is and the way that the pricing shakes out. And he is certainly not going to cross anything near uh, 5% ownership. He has not cracked that since Punta Cana. So uh, I, I think he is an interesting flyer and you're just hoping he makes the cut. All right, that'll do it for my top five sleepers for this week's Rocket Mortgage Classic. Again, go do your homework. Do a deeper dive on any of these guys. See if they are the right fit for you and for your goals this week. Let me know what you think. Tweet me, at Rick Run Good or leave a comment below. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you guys soon.